in a world with low cars and tall trailers. One man, actually seven men, will build a trailer to end all trailers. Get ready for the trailer. Coming this now, actually coming right now. Race cars are low to the ground, and land speed cars are the lowest of the low. This makes getting a trailer underneath a race car kind of a challenge. We ran into this at Bonneville this year. We had to raise the front of the trailer by lifting the adjustable hitch and adding a long ramp to get it all pretty flat. Even then, we were gently scraping the bottom of the car on the trailer. Something needs to be done, especially considering that this car will soon have a body that will make it even harder to get on and off a trailer. So I set out to modify my trailer. It will need to be lower, so a drop axle. It will need to have a ramp with a razor sharp edge on it, and it will need air suspension to get it all the way down onto the axle. It became pretty clear that this still doesn't work. Part of the problem is that the wheelbase is 8 miles long, which means there can be no high point on the trailer. Also, based on some CFD analyses from AirShaper, the nose of the car wants to be really low, which means the ramp up needs to be super shallow. I considered ditching the drop axle and going with independent trailing suspension on the sides, that way I can lower the deck down to the ground. A lot of aftermarket race car trailers have this, but I still need the trailer at an angle because I can't have a high point. And with the minimum possible angle, I end up needing a ramp that's about 8 feet long, much of which is only 2 or 3 millimeters thick, and even then it barely works. There has to be a better way. There are some land speed racers, mostly motorcycles, who use a crane to get their bikes on and off the trailer. This doesn't really work for me because my car is too heavy and I don't really want to build a super heavy trailer. I could ballast the crane with some complicated pulley and weight system, but the truth is that there's already a solution out there for this. The Nebulous Theorem cars use it, as well as a couple other teams. The answer is to cut the bottom out of the trailer and lift the car up from the top. This eliminates all the problems of loading the car on with respect to it being too low to the ground. It could be under the ground and this would still work. All you need is a lifting point, a crank, and an overhang. Except we're going to continue that overhang all the way over since we want two tires on this trailer. We're going to use two lifting points to keep it balanced, and we're going to use an electric winch since we're lazy. This is what we're making. The basic trailer here is 3 inch by 2 inch 8th wall tubing on the bottom. We're getting most of that from the old trailer, but we are going to have to add a little bit of extension on it. To lift the car, we will need two towers. I'm going to place these right above two pretty strong parts of the frame. One on the rear bulkhead behind the engine, and one over this bar in the front, keeping my legs inside the car at all times. The car will sit on these three cross beams here while it's being transported. These will flip out of the way, so bearings on one side and a pin on the other. When moving, the car will always be on these cross beams, so the towers only lift the car. Because of that, I'm going to try to make these somewhat simple. The vertical posts are 2 inch square, thin wall tube. Going across, I'm going to use some 1 inch tubes, and we're going to triangulate those so it looks like a bridge or one of those lighting things they use at concerts. That seems like an efficient design. I'll also add some braces angled down at 45 degrees to give some extra stiffness and strength. The actual pulling will be done through a pulley right in the middle. For this, I got some plain bearing pulleys and had Send Cut Send laser out some brackets to hold them. Brackets with speed holes. After all, this is for a race car. I could use two electric winches, one on each side, but that seems unnecessary and dumb. So, one winch splitting into two lines, one going to the back pulley and down to the car. The other one goes around a second pulley in the rear, and then all the way up to the front pulley and down to the front of the car. If I set up the length on these correctly, the car will always be level when lifting it. If I do this, then there are several hundred pounds of cable force trying to pull these two towers together, so I will just add another 2x2 two two tube in the middle. This was kind of long, and I was a little worried about buckling, so I did some quick math, and it turns out the 2x2 two two tube is about 50 times stronger than it needs to be, so we're good. Just for good measure, I added some tubes triangulating the towers down in the front and the rear, and I've made a suspension bridge. I decided to make this 40 inches wide on the inside. That should be plenty of space for the car to roll under, but it's also not so wide that it'll be flimsy and bend outward. I will need to cut those bars on the old trailer shorter, but that's not a problem. The VIN number is on one of these pieces, so I don't have to register a new trailer. By the way, I know VIN number is redundant since the N in VIN means number. You don't have to comment on that. It always feels confusing. Fin, bin, no VIN. Just say VIN number. It's fine. Have I gone on this rant before? I feel like I might have. Anyway, the big problem with this design is that it's 25 feet long, and it would be really nice to keep it under about 18 feet so I could get it into parking spaces and also my garage. So here's what I did. I cut all this garbage off. Nothing behind here is doing anything except for holding up the taillights. With this part removed, we're looking at a length of 17 and a half feet. 
Unfortunately, the land speed car that goes on the trailer is longer than that. There's two things I can do here. I can design a big triangle on a hinge, one for each side. These can store on the side of the trailer when it's not towing, and can hinge out 180 degrees when there's a car on there. These triangles would each have a brake light. I could perhaps have a bar between them for stability, or I could just pin them up at the front. The other thing I could do, and the thing that I'm going to do, is cut out a 5 foot long piece of 2 inch square tubing, attach brake lights to that, and have mounting pins for it on the top of the trailer and also on the back of the land speed car, thus making the race car part of the trailer. I don't know if this is legal. Probably is. This seems like the simplest solution. It doesn't add a lot of mass, and it doesn't matter if I make the rear of the car shorter, which I might do. I also looked at adding bars connecting the tops of the towers, but I don't think I'll need those. But it did give me an idea. In a previous video, I talked about how gun cases are great for storing things on your roof rack. I bought three gun cases for this and then used them like two times and they've been sitting in my closet ever since. But they would be perfect for right up here. So I'm going to weld a couple of bars going forward and back and just bolt the gun cases up top. That way I can have a place for all the stuff that goes with the race car and it can all just live there permanently. I'm also going to add a battery to run the winch and a solar panel to keep that battery charged while it's sitting. The front gun case will be excellent place for that. The biggest challenge with this design is suspension. I can't have an axle going across, so I can't use my old axle. I could bolt on some spindles directly to the frame, but I'd like to have some suspension on the trailer. And I'd also like the tires to stick out a little bit more to give it some width and stability. I thought about some suspension parts I had lying around, and then something wonderful occurred to me. I have the entire outboard suspension from a Dodge Viper. You don't typically see independent wishbone suspension on a trailer, but it would actually benefit me a little bit to have the tires wider. I would need to weld tabs on the top and bottom to hold the A-arms and a link to keep it all straight, and of course a mount for the top of the coilover. I also have the brakes, so I could add trailer brakes with a surge coupler. These are just couplers that have a hydraulic master cylinder inside, and whenever you slow down it compresses the master cylinder and activates the brakes. Oh man, better yet, why don't I take that extra master cylinder I have and the extra lever, and I can build a 4 bar link going to a coupler so I have my own hydraulic system, and I can do this all with stuff I already have in the garage. Whoa Matt, calm down. Take a breath, take your ADD medication, and think about this. There are about 15 reasons why this is a bad idea. The biggest is that the suspension ends up making the trailer way wider than it needs to be. Like, way too wide. I could make my own control arms and shorten it up a little bit, and maybe move the inboard points inboard more, but then I'm making new parts and chewing into my race car area. I also don't have a good place to mount the top of the coilovers. I can run a bar across here, but I'd also probably need to run tubes up like this to keep it from just bending. All of the suspension load goes through this, and there's not a great place to put it. And of course, the trailer brake idea is just all around bad. I could use the hubs and brakes and make my own swing suspension, but as you probably know, I have too many projects already, and it would be really great if this trailer could just be a trailer and not a constant source of fixing. So I did something I rarely do. I broke down, and I bought the correct solution instead of building some sketchy thing. This just pivots about the axis here and squishes this rubber here. The mounting requires a wider area than the 2 inches I have, so I'm going to add some 3 inch tubes onto the outside. This will give me the extra width I need for that stability, but not too much. It also stiffens up this area here, so I have a ton of bending stiffness where the load goes right into the frame, and I have a good triangulated load path to where the car sits on this whole suspension bridge thing. By the way, I decided I'm only going to use two of these crossbars to hold the car. The middle tube will be welded an inch lower. I really just have it there to connect the two suspension points together when driving. Anyway, that's the design. Let's build it. I had ordered all the parts and all the send, cut, send, laser cut pieces, but I did need to go pick up about $450 worth of metal. For that, I need a trailer, which I have. So I made the old trailer dig its own grave by using it to pick up the new steel. Fret not, old trailer. You will not die, but be transformed like a butterfly into something new and beautiful. Just as soon as we completely disassemble you. This was a challenge and required the help of several power tools and a very long cheater bar. All the fasteners on this trailer were totally rusted. The salt flats did not do it any favors. It was bad. I wanted to use a bunch of parts from the old trailer, but it became obvious that most of them would not be usable. The crank lift thing was all rusted and worn out. The taillights were broken. I could have used the coupler, but I decided to go with an angled one to keep the trailer as short as possible. I was hoping to use the fenders, but we couldn't use those either for reasons I will get to later. In any case, we were left with the only two parts of the trailer that were going to get reused. How much of a trailer can you replace and still have it be the old trailer? What if I used all the extra parts from the old trailer and made another trailer? Which one would be the original trailer? This is a question that has puzzled philosophers for thousands of years, and I know the answer. 
The answer is whatever trailer has the VIN number. That's the original trailer. One of these parts has the VIN number on it, so it's technically the same trailer. For now, it's time to assemble the steel. The old trailer frame was cut to size and welded together with extensions welded on the back. The towers were mostly assembled separately and then added onto the frame. The towers are the same. I only needed one pulley on the front tower, but I welded in three of the laser cut parts just like I did on the rear for no particular reason. The only thing that matters is that these are welded on the correct way. One of the pulleys is right in the center. That's the one that goes down to the car. The offset pulley in the rear is the one that loops around to the front. So the way I have it, the offset pulley needs to go on the right side. All I need to do is make sure I remember that when I weld on the first tower. And I didn't. It's backwards. I welded it on backwards. So I can either cut it off and re-weld it, or I can just mirror everything to the other side. And we'll do that. You may have noticed there are about half a dozen unpaid interns helping this time. I decided to buy a case of beer and invite some friends over for a bit of the old drinking and using power tools. Fortunately, none of the dimensions on this trailer are critical, so we just drank and cut and drank and welded into the night. We got the winch mounts located by using the winch to hold itself in place, which I thought was pretty clever. The next day, I finished up welding, adding fish plates, and we drilled holes for the suspension and the coupler. I did have to weigh both the car and the trailer and do some math to make sure the suspension was in the right place. I want about 15% of the trailer weight on the tongue when it's loaded, and I want to make sure that it has a decent weight on the tongue when it's unloaded. Some quick math showed that my random guess in CAD was less than 3 inches off. I am good at estimating. We thought of a clever way to get the wiring inside the frame. We used an air compressor to blow some string all the way through the frame. It worked. Not the first time, or the second time, but it did eventually work. And then we dragged it outside, cleaned it up, and gave it a coat of paint. The paint didn't really stick to the galvanized part of the old frame. Uh, apparently this is a thing. Paint doesn't like to stick to galvanized steel. I did not know this, but since it's not going to rust, I'm not too worried about it. Wiring took forever, but it actually turned out really nice. The two bars holding the gun cases had a slight issue. They were totally unsupported, so they wobbled a lot. The frame rate of my camera makes these look like they're vibrating really slowly, but they were actually vibrating at a much higher frequency. But you can see the amplitude here, and it's not good. It's not much better with the cases installed, so I solved this problem with another order from Send Cut Send for a laser cut metal piece. I considered reusing the wheels and tires from the old trailer, but they were corroded, cracked, and barely rated for the weight of the trailer and race car. The spare was good, but I needed to buy new wheels and tires. Unless I happened to have some wheels and tires lying around that were perfectly good and not being used for anything, like, say, Dodge Viper wheels and tires. Oh yeah, that looks just the right amount of ridiculous. This did require massive wheel adapter spacers, which may or may not be a good idea. I guess we'll see. This is also the reason the old trailer fenders won't work, which is fine, because they're kind of crappy anyways. This was yet another problem solved with the magic of Send Cut Send. I drew up a simple faceted fender, had Send Cut Send laser cut it and bend it, then I welded up the sections to make fenders. I do still need to make mounts for these, but that will come later. The winch was a Harbor Freight special. I added a rain and dust cover to keep it nice and clean. I measured, cut, and recrimped the cable into three separate pieces and then ran them through the pulleys. I did forget that the width of the laser cut mounts was only half an inch, so I had to bust out the sledgehammer and anvil to do some fine tuning of crimp width. I hope this doesn't negatively affect the strength of the crimp too much, and if it does, we will find out the hard way. The pulleys are plain bearings and I used shoulder bolts for them to ride on, but I did drill the center of the bolts and added zerk fittings so I can squeeze grease in. This will help it move freely, but mostly I did it to keep dust, salt, and water from creeping in there, and if it does, I can just squeeze it out. The end of the wire ropes get hooks that attach to the car. These eye bolts will screw into the frame and lift the car on and off. The crossbars are hinged at one end. The other two teams I talked to had crossbars they just removed, but this seemed way easier. I lathed out some steel and pressed in some bearing races. These are just using tapered roller bearings with flanges holding them on one side. There's a bolt hole on the other side and a nut welded to the bottom. We can just drop the bolt in if we're driving around on the lake bed or we can bolt it down for longer trips. I added some stainless steel blocks for the bars to slide into so it won't get rusty from paint rubbing off. I also need to add some drain holes in these tubes and spray the inside with some internal frame coating lest they fill with water and rust out from the inside. I did realize before I fully welded it in that this bar will make it impossible to get this bolt in on this side, so I moved the bottom of it to the outside suspension mount steel. I will at some point add cones to the front and rear crossbars and cups to the bottom of the land speed car to secure it in. Then we can just ratchet strap it down using the eye bolts or something. We'll figure out that part later. For now, it's time for a test. 
I am partway through disassembling the land speed car to fix the suspension and clean it up, so it's not exactly complete. And I haven't welded in the bosses for those eye bolts yet, so we're just using ratchet straps for now. But there it is. Excellent. And yes, I was over budget by over 200%. I wanted to do this for 800 bucks, which seems ludicrous in retrospect, but this will make loading and unloading the car so much easier. The fenders will soon be installed, and I am probably going to buy some lowering spindles to drop the whole trailer down about 4 inches, but other than that, it's done. Now I need to just work on the actual car.